Hey guys, it's Zahava. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. We are March 14th right now. It is 6.13 in the morning and believe it or not, I have had a sleep in. Um, so yeah, I mean, I haven't done like a vlog video in what feels like a while because you know that you're on kind of a delay when you come to this channel and I try not to have you on a delay, but such is life, you know. I'm not at the point where I feel comfortable enough uh, with the amount of backlog that I have and if you if you know me at all you'll know that I'm a prepper not a panster I don't want to leave you guys in the lurch so I always like to make sure I have a few videos out if I ever slow down I'll just start releasing them every two or three days instead of every day but for now the schedule is um pretty near every day so I can get you guys caught up um right now I'm having my coffee um and I'm glue booking. You can't see it. I'll pick up the camera and just like, ooh, see? It's like a huge mess happening here. I'm glue booking. <laughs> I glue book in the morning and I watch videos on YouTube just like while I'm having my coffee because it's like my thing. Um, but why did I want to talk to you this morning? I had an idea pop into my head. I'm like, oh, I should record and like talk to everyone. Um, was it about the glue book? Oh no, I don't even remember now. Was it what I want to talk about? Oh yeah, I was just watching the playback of a video that I released for you guys this morning, which was, um, I think the one about the chatty vlog. And, um, I wanted to tell you what my, my plans were basically for today. I don't know if you guys can see, but... I'll turn the camera around. I'm leaving the light the way it is. I'm warning you, I'm leaving the light the way it is. Okay, so it's gonna be kind of shitty light. Look what's doing here on the table, okay? First of all, the supervisor is here. She's here every morning, just sitting all on top of my stuff. So um, right now she is sitting on top of the bird book. I have my camera set up. You guys have seen this before. Um, move this around. This is like all stuff from like a video that I filmed for you yesterday, which I like literally have not cleaned up on my desk. I, oh yeah, I didn't show you guys these carts that I got. Like this was something new that I got that I meant to show you, I don't know, like last week or something. But of course you can see that even though I have a lot more space and I can move things around and like now I'm not constantly banging my chair into like the boxes that I used to have on the floor. If you guys have been around before, you'll remember that I had like boxes on the floor. I don't have those boxes on the floor now. Now they've moved up into a four tier cart, except that like... I'm not really use, utilizing my space as best I can because I seem to have like a lot like here. It's mostly just like books and stuff. So I seem to have like a lot of um, space being taken up by by books, which is not great. And then like here, I don't know, we're going to have to do probably a video or something like that because this is like all the scrapbooking ephemera. All the stuff that I'm using to make junk journals and all I can see right now is a whole bunch of bags and piles. And if you're asking me if I know what's in here, no, no, I don't know what's in here. So that's basically my work table right now. And I actually have fabric orders to fill, which is going to be like insane because I'm going to have to clean this entire table up basically. But, you know, these are some things you've seen before. Still haven't put those away. And yeah, so the reason that I'm showing you this this morning is because I have to clear this table. Like part of my to-do list today is to um, pack up the stuff that's on this table so that I can finally take pictures of the panty liners because I went to a market this weekend, which I'll show you footage about in a, in a sec or maybe I have already. I don't know. Um, depends how I do the editing, but I went to a market this past weekend on March 10th um, and it, you know, it was okay. I sold like three junk journals in the end, but, um, no, that's a lie. Two. I sold two junk journals. No, three. I sold three because I sold like one of my Amazon upcycled ones. So I sold three junk journals in the end and one set of panty liners, which was really good. But 
the market like didn't have any people in it and i'm pretty sure that out of the 40 tables that were there there were quite a few vendors that like did not make any sales and it was a market that i'm gonna put you guys down because i'm like standing here and the camera is shaking and that's like awful and i don't want to do that to you so let me just put you guys down and blow my nose you're welcome, by the way, for that, that I edit out my nose blowing. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, so, so the market like didn't end up actually having people uh, come to it. But I sold one junk journal, a visit to the children's zoo, sold at that market to a fellow vendor. I sold the uh, butterfly fabric Amazon upcycled package journal that I have, which I never put those ones online. I take those ones to market. And there was a third one. It was Sorisette et le Lion that sold to a lady that came. But I guess we just weren't lucky because it was the weather. First of all, the weather. We had had beautiful weather in Montreal lately. And some days, like even in February, they went up to 12 or 13 degrees, which is like literally, I don't know. I, I don't think that I can ever remember a day where February went to 12 or 13 degrees in my life. Um, but it did. And then the day of the market, snow, heavy, like wet snow, rain, cold winds, like just really not conducive to people wanting to walk and get, hello. Yeah. We have a visitor. We have a visitor. See what's doing over here? Everybody's come to inspect what mom is doing this morning. And they're going to sniff each other's asses on camera. <laughs> when you know, you know. Uh, yeah, so um, I did end up send, selling those three junk journals and one set of panty liners. And then it occurred to me as I was watching the playback of the video that I released for you guys this morning, because I'm not a narcissist, uh, the panty liners that I said that I was going to release onto the website, I like never put onto the website. So basically all of this is to say that today we're going to have to finish the junk journal that we're working on, which is currently uh, the pokey little puppy. So I have to finish that, clear off the desk. Tomorrow's Friday, so it's going to be the last mailing day before the weekend. So I have to make sure that I am... Um, all set to get my Etsy orders out and stuff. And then, 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 then I have to set up the panty liners to take pictures of them to put them on the website. Uh, because I am doing markets, yes, but those markets are few and far between. And I only have like one market a month. And it just doesn't make sense in my mind to have panty liners sitting around in storage for a month not being sold. So like I can put them up on the Made by Maurice website and put them up on the Made by Maurice Etsy shop if you guys prefer to shop that way or if you're international and a VAT number is required for you to, uh, for me rather, to sell to you because you're in the UK or, um, or that kind of thing. So um, I, I figured that, you know, when I was running my business, and selling those panty liners uh, four to six years ago. And I realized that whenever I talk about it on the channel, I don't like really have my dates kind of locked down. And that's because I don't really know at what point I was running that business for four years, kind of like before the pandemic. So really from, uh, I would say about 2016 to 2020. And in 2020, I still had it. And that's when I made the conversion over to my corporation, like stopped working under my name as a business and changed banners and started moving more towards the fabric store and stopped sewing. And um, yeah, I mean, like eventually if you guys want, like I'll do a meet me, meet and greet Q&A, like a big long video where we can sit down and have some coffee and cookies and like talk about, you know, what my story has been thus far. Uh, if that's something you want, please let me know in the comments below and I will, um, I will definitely consider doing that for you. I would love to do that for you. Um, if that's something you want to see. So basically Anywhere, like, I have to keep thinking about 
the date, right? So we're in 2024. So yes, four years ago, I did have this business. Four years ago, I was selling them online, but it was the pandemic and people were in mask gate and only, people were basically only buying masks. So I ended up taking all the liners that I didn't sell because I didn't know that the lady you know, in the consignment store needed them. And I took them all, all of them, over to Australia in 2022 when I went with Eric. And, um, and yeah, so I left them with my sister's mother-in-law, basically, for her store, which if you've been here before, you will have seen me do a tour in one of my Australia vlogs. I do, at the very end of that vlog, do a tour through uh, Shirley's uh, little shop that she has. And um, my panty liners ended up there. So rather than have everybody ship them back, which would be like astronomical. I'm just making more. I'm making more with my new fabrics and I am taking them to market, but it's stupid of me business-wise not to uh, vary the uh, sources of my income. So if I'm going to be taking them to market and selling them in person where I got to be honest, the sell is much easier because people can see it, touch it, feel it. I also bring a... Um, I, I'm wondering if I'm not going to take a picture of it because I don't know if I'll shoot myself in the foot, but I also bring a washed, uh, wrinkled, drier version of the panty liners so that people can see that it shrinks about three-eighths to half an inch when you put it in the dryer because I, the liners themselves are nine and a half inches long. But if you don't want to air dry them, and of course it's cotton flannel and it hasn't been washed, so it's going to shrink like a little bit, but it's going to shrink even more if you put it in the dryer. So I do bring a washed, unironed uh, version of one single liner so that the people shopping can see the difference and it helps basically just to manage the expectation. Um, and I find it kind of helps the sales as well because then people know what it's going to look like if they follow the same procedure. And that liner, obviously, as I've mentioned, has been through the dryer. So the maximum shrinkage and the maximum sort of like, um, you know, what the threads are going to look like once it's been washed, what the liner is going to look like once it's been washed. Like, I think it's really useful information to have. So I do bring a sample of a new versus washed. And of course, the washed one, before you start asking, has never been worn. <laughs> it's just washed for the, you know, purposes of, of being a sample. Um, but yeah, so I bring that with me. And I'm just wondering if I want to put that up on the Etsy uh, photos and the website photos so that people can see the difference so that they know like obviously if you press it after you wash it because you I don't know have that kind of time or that kind of OCD like you really want it to be <laughs> super straight you can do that if you want to do that but uh, hello <laughs> that doesn't happen here so um, I want people to know what it's going to look like so that they're not surprised and they say, gee, it shrank so much. I didn't get my, my money's worth. No, you, you did. You did. It's a very good, very sturdy product. Um, so yeah, so that is the project for today. Today, if I can get all those liners, and I think I must have like 20 different styles, if I can get those all up online, I will consider that to have been a really productive day. So... On that note, I'm going to go back to my glue booking. I'm going to finish my coffee, my morning routine, get the dishes done. Um, what else do I need to do? Oh, yeah, I've been changing my diet. I wanted to tell you about that. So I know, I know. Okay, people are talking about this carnivore diet. I am not saying that I'm getting on the bandwagon. First of all, I want to go on record as saying I am not a dietitian. I am not a health professional. <laughs> I'm just a person who's watching videos and trying to gather information. Okay carnivore diet. What do I know about it? Literally nothing. I have like a Mickey Mouse 101 education on this subject, but I have not been sleeping for like a really long time. I've been up 3, 3.30, sometimes 2.30 in the morning, just not able to sleep. It's been going on for a while. These last like three or four days, and I'm telling you, it's been really fresh. I've just drastically increased the protein intake that I have normally been having. And I have found that these last two nights I have slept. I have slept throughout the whole night. Yeah, I get up to pee. I always get up to pee. But 
then I'm able to fall back asleep. I don't have as many intrusive thoughts that are keeping me awake at night. I'm sleeping two hours extra instead of getting up at 3.30 in the morning. And this has only been two nights or, or three nights that I've noticed this, like since increasing the protein in my diet by eating like a hard boiled egg for snack and like lowering my carb intake to the point where I, I mean, I'm not not eating carbs. Like, let's, let's be real people. Like, I do not want to go to my grave never having eaten another slice of pie. But I think that there's a big difference between having a bowl of potato chips every night. Now, I'm not someone that will pound down the whole bag, but um, because Laura Spath on her YouTube channel talks about um, that like she was someone that if you gave her an Oreo cookie, she could not just have the Oreo cookie. She would have to have the entire sleeve, let's say, of Oreo cookies. And I'm not I'm not made like that. First of all, I don't like Oreo cookies. <laughs> um, but secondly, I, I am able to have a taste of something and then not necessarily need to eat the entire slice or the entire bowl or whatever. So I guess... I'm lucky that way. If I sit down on my couch and I have like the big tub of, you know, two liters of Coata Cook ice cream, because that's like my brand of choice, because they have the most clean ingredients. Everything that they put in their ice cream is literally pronounceable. So that's my go-to brand here in Canada. But, um, and especially in Quebec, I don't know if they sell all over Canada, but in Quebec, it's like a two hour drive from my house. So, uh, no, it's like four hours from Montreal. It's two, they're in the Eastern townships. It's like two hours from where we used to have our campground. But anyway, they're a Quebec brand. It's a beautiful region. If you have a chance to go and visit Coaticook, if you're ever in the area in the Eastern townships of, um, of Quebec, I definitely highly recommend. It's such a cute little town. Kind of reminds me of a landlocked version of Old Orchard, Maine. So if you guys have ever been there, it's kind of got like the same, uh, same vibe, um, but all of this is to say that 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 uh, I, if I sit down with a two liter of ice cream in front of me, I, I'm probably going to go a little beyond what I should be eating, as I think most of us would. But if I sit down with like a small, you know, those Corel small like bowls, like dessert bowls that they have, like the small ones, um, I... I would finish that bowl and probably be satisfied. Maybe I would take a little bit more, but I wouldn't be taking a huge spoon and like, you know, chunking my way through that big thing of ice cream. So um, I think it's just a question of being more mindful with what I'm eating, being more deliberate with what I'm eating. And I've never much liked the idea of restriction, which is why getting back to this carnivore diet that everybody's talking about, um, I don't, first of all, I don't have, any autoimmune diseases. Like I know a lot of people that are on this diet are on it because they have specific health conditions like autoimmune. They have maybe um, Crohn's or they have maybe, I don't know, celiac disease. I, I don't know. People, I'm not a doctor, not a doctor. So people, people go on this diet for many reasons, not the least of which is to lose weight. Um, and as you know, okay, I'm not, I'm telling you my personal. Okay. So I, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm fat, but I weigh now what I did, um, which is 129 pounds, which for my frame, five foot three, I feel like not good. Okay. I was nine months pregnant weighing the same as I weigh now. So for me, <laughs> for me, I am not feeling my best self. Um, I'm extremely, extremely sedentary since the pandemic. Um, it's something that I struggle with that I wanted the Addison's just awake. <laughs> She's getting ready for school. But it's something that I've struggled with for a really long time. Um, since Addison was born, like, okay, just, just brief history, just real quick. Okay. I went through a postpartum depression with my son, which caused me to lose really an unhealthy amount of weight. And if we ever do like a big sit and chat and, you know, spilling the tea, we could, we could go into my whole story and what kind of brought me here. But, um, for now, basically I ended up 
weighing like nine months pregnant, giving birth to Addison, I was 135. So 129 right now, I'm not in a good, I'm not in a good space. Now, that being said, I do not have any um, conditions, medical conditions that would lead me to believing that a carnivore diet would be good for me. However, and plus, I really like vegetables. I really like vegetables. Naturally, I gravitate towards eating vegetables. I am not somebody that you have to fight with to eat your greens or, you know, have a bowl of quinoa or have a, you know, veggie. Like Eric made me a terrific chickpea curry with sweet potatoes and like green beans. And it's just like so yummy and I want to eat it all. But, um, but I'm somebody that like, I naturally gravitate towards veggies and I digest them really, really well. So I, and I'm one of those freakish people that not only can digest milk, like I do not have a lactose intolerance, like I am good to go. And, um, and I also digest corn. I know it's maybe an overshare, but like, I am not one of those people that sees it come out like yellow bullets. Okay. Like I do not, I digest it. So I am really fortunate to be able to eat a wide variety of foods, but I, I think that I'm not always present of mind when I do that. So I've been struggling with, you know, the pandemic, the overeating and like all of that after effect, which I think globally, uh, at least in, in I, I, I mean, I can't speak for anywhere else aside from North America, but let's just say like a lot of us, a lot of us have you know, sort of struggled with since then. It's been kind of a thing like even my my doctor's pediatrician, my doctor's, my daughter's pediatrician was saying that she's seeing an arc, you know, like a lot of the kids post pandemic have been, you know, have seen weight gain. I think we all have uh, just because we weren't moving. And again, living in Canada, it's not really conducive to wanting to go outside and walk and, and do the things. And I have a treadmill. I do. Um, but it doesn't adjust to my natural rhythm of walking. It's like preset speeds. And I don't know. I just, I don't like it. I don't like it because it doesn't feel natural to me. And when things don't feel natural to me, it gets on my nerves. And then I just throw in the towel. So hi, have we met? (laughs) Have we met? (laughs) So I'm trying to control, um, you know, my food intake and the quality of the food intake. And I've been reading more and watching more videos and trying to get more information about the carnivore diet. And in no way do I want to participate in something so restrictive. However, I will say that these last three days, I have drastically increased my meat intake. And I have noticed that, uh, just in the last three days, I I'm sleeping better. I'm sleeping better. So I wonder if there's something to it. Um, I'm going to keep you guys kind of low key posted on how things work for that. Um, but you know, I, I'm also weary, uh, of like, I'm worried a little bit about stopping things like vegetables or cutting down too much. Like I don't really like the idea of an elimination diet because, you know, gut health and things like that, you know, I don't want whatever, um, whatever, organisms are working in my body to die off. And then I'm not able to digest these things that I'm already so fortunate to be able to digest properly. So I don't want to take a good thing and basically ruin it because of vanity. Um, And I don't, you know, I just don't like the way that I look. And that's a personal struggle. And that's not because I'm looking for you guys to you know, send compliments or whatever, or tell me, I'm just sharing with you that that's personal. And, um, it's just one of the things that I want to get like under, under control. I don't know if it has to do with being on the wrong side of 40 could be, um, I might not, you know, I don't have a fear of aging. Like that's not something that has ever, like, I am not Joan Rivers, right? Like this is not something that I, that has ever bothered me, but I just don't like that my pants don't fit. And, that's kind of where, where I am. All right. So we are nearing 25 minutes. I think this is probably long enough for a vlog. It's certainly long enough for you guys to be hanging out with me. But uh, if you are still hanging out with me and you have not clicked off this video, 
Thank you so much for staying. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you so much for liking the video, subscribing to the channel if you're new, leaving a comment down below if you feel like you can contribute anything. That would be great. I would love that. And if you have stayed until the end of the video, you know that you are absolutely my favorite. And this is Ahava signing off. I will see you again in the next one. Ciao for now.